Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Saya Syidik dan saya Muhammad Safwan dan kami berada di episod 4 dalam Mencari Fitra. Baik, insya-Allah pada episod kali ini di Mencari Fitra kita berada di Arab Street. Kita akan interview siapa? Syidik Ha, jadi di sini orangnya bersama macam nama saya juga Nama dia adalah Kevin Shidik Lim oh. ha, Dia adalah seorang pengasas CC Iaitu stands for Converts Central Okey, ha. insyaAllah kita sebentar lagi Kita akan pergi ke tempat yang diorang rent space ni Converts Central ni Kita akan lihat lah uh, Apakah program-program, aktiviti-aktiviti yang mereka lakukan Di bulan Ramadan ini insyaAllah Okey, ready? Let's go! Alhamdulillah, over here we are with uh, our brother Kevin Lim Siddiq. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe I have introduced your number, but maybe you can just share more about yourself. Mm-hmm. And he is basically convert. Maybe you can share mm-hmm. regarding your stories. Yeah. Uh, so I'm 25 this year. Uh, I'm a final year student in SME, study accountancy and finance. Uh, I embraced Islam about uh, five years ago when I was 20 years old. Back when I was 2018. Uh, oh, basically like one year before, almost the COVID area. COVID. Yeah, yeah, two years before COVID. Uh, I took my shahada in January 2018. So about two years for me to learn Islam and everything uh, before COVID hit, and uh, we had to then stay at home lah. It was difficult from then on. Yeah. So yeah. how how do you actually begin your journey in Islam? Or prior to that, you have friends, mm. and because of your friends, you convert. Mm. Or how is mm. it? Well, it's actually uh, most common stories are long stories. Uh, yeah. Uh, in summary, uh, growing up. Uh, I was quite a normal Chinese kid. Uh, practice Taoism, uh, so burning all the paper money with my family as a tradition. Uh, but growing up into secondary school, I was a free thinker. I didn't really have interaction with religion. Didn't really think much of it. Uh, my best friends were in secondary school were Muslims. So then I remember sec one, sec two, sec three, we were joking with them. Because uh, every Friday they have to go off, mm-hmm. right? And then I'll joke with them. Next Friday I go with you. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, thereafter in JC, I met a friend who uh, who introduced me to Islam. So uh, then, learning about Islam was a little bit uh, kind of a risky thing to do. I think the sentiments, especially in 2017, 2018, there were a lot of terrorist attacks. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So uh, you know, a lot of uh, media outlets also labeling uh, Muslims as terrorists. Mm-hmm. So learning about Islam then was a bit more uh, turbulent. Uh, what really opened my heart to Islam was uh, my first time at Masjid Al Alwi. Uh, so my first time at the Masjid, and I thought like I would be out, very out place, you know, like. Like you can look at me and one look you know like, I'm Chinese. Like, there's no <laughs> running away, right? And 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 if you guys uh, know Masjid Baalui, every Thursday night they have a rati. Uh, what really picked me about Islam was that everyone around me then, my best friends, you know, good friends. I, I, through secondary school, I realized that Islam Muslims were quite cool, like, quite funny, like the vibes <laughs> and everything, right? So I was like, you know, like this, but definitely not terrorists. Like, so I want to learn more about it, right? So then I wasn't invited to Masjid Baalui lah. So uh, again, standing in front of the mosque, I was thinking this is just gonna be, you know, uh, an experience that I will never forget in a bad way. You know, like everyone's gonna <laughs> ask me why I'm at the mosque and everything. I'm not gonna understand anything. You know, it's gonna be terrible. So uh, they they then connected me to a brother at the mosque. So he brought me around. Right. So to my surprise, uh, what I had received at the mosque was a very warm welcome. You know, they never asked anything about me. They said, "Are you hungry? Are you thirsty?" And uh, you know they invited me to eat with them. Yeah. Uh, and and I, after their ratib normally Habib Hassan yeah. will have his yeah. uh, makan yeah. at the back. Yeah. So I will I will just follow them and invite. So I felt like I was at home lah. And I was thinking these people are successful. Uh, they are lawyers and, and some of them are really uh, very successful individuals. And yeah, they're so nice. Right, and it's a stark difference from what you know of Muslims outside, mm. and that opened my heart. But what really, really kind of kicked the door open was when I was at with Habib Hassan, and he has those like Arabic calligraphies mm. on the wall. So I was pointing there. I didn't know what Habib or Hassan was. I was like, Uncle, I was like, <laughs> Uncle, what is this? You know, I asked him. So he said, oh, This is the verse of the Quran, and uh, I said, Can you translate it for me? I'd like to know lah. So he said that this verse is from the second chapter of the Quran. He said, This there is no compulsion in religion. And he said, "This is what it means." Huh? So when he explained to me, I'm like, "Hey, like this makes so much sense. Like religion shouldn't be because of anything else because it's something that you share with God, Allah." So that gave me a lot of uh, interest in Islam. Opened up, picked my interest, opened my heart to Islam. Thereafter, I went to Darul Akam to learn about Islam. Uh, and after about one year's time, I converted in 2018. And okay, so I recall one of the biggest things I did. Uh, um, as a 19-year-old kid trying to tell my family I want to be Muslim, so I thought it was uh, quite 
an effective way by going to the family WhatsApp group chat. Like all my uncles and aunties oh, there, people, as far man. as you can imagine, like the <laughs> distant uncle and auntie. I'm like, okay, okay, everybody at one shot. I'm gonna tell everybody. It's easier, right? Yeah. So I type like a three or four paragraph WhatsApp <laughs> message. Then I'm like, okay, guys, I'm gonna be Muslim. This is the reason. Ta 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 ta. That sense. Oh. oh man, that was the biggest, biggest <laughs> mistake I've made, man. Because I, I was not hearing the end of it for like two or three months straight. Everyone was like, you're too young, blah blah. You have no permission, and all the um, stereotypes about Islam mm. came in. So I realized that that is not a good way to do it, right? So thereafter, after a while. Um, I was then advised like let's then just talk to my parents first, talk to my mum, right? So my mum, uh, she's she was originally a Malaysian. So after giving birth to me and my sister, she became Singaporean. So she has also that prior experience with Islam, right? She knows uh, her friends are also Muslim. So to her it was not really like a perception thing, but rather your son might be making a very rash decision, right? He's only twenty. So after a while, she decided might not agree, but supported my journey lah. For this Chinese New Year, we share. Uh, we eat steamboat, and I have a halal one for me. Oh. So in the past, I was fighting with my cousins trying to get the crab meat <laughs> and the mushrooms and the enoki mushroom and everything. Yeah, right? Now, alhamdulillah, I have one by myself. So like, it's the progress that is made after a few years. Uh, so you have to talk to them. So, so we could say that you, I don't know, created or about this convent center because you didn't want people to be alone in the convent, basically. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um. It was both uh, circumstantial yeah. because of COVID and uh, also because of my experiences. Uh. So for one, uh, I started Commerce Central in the March of 2020, and that was phase mm-hmm. one. Right? So you know, like no essential. Uh, if you're not essential, you cannot go. This is during the lockdown. Lockdown, yeah. yeah. So um, it's actually very uh, sad for Commerce because e- even up to a day before they had the circuit breaker, mm-hmm. there were still uh, conversations going on. Right. So imagine, uh, just imagine, you're in the uh, shoes of a convert. Yesterday I took my shahada. It's coming to Ramadan, right? Yeah. Yeah, at the point of time, I can't leave home. My mom and dad might not know that I'm Muslim. Yeah. I need to learn how to pray. I need to learn how to fast, and I cannot. I, I cannot even leave my house. Right. Yeah. So that was a very difficult time for converts yeah. across yeah. Singapore. I would say maybe across the world. Across the world, I can't leave home. So in Singapore also, um, if you're not physically in Darul Akam or at the masjid at the point of time, way back in 2020, not everything is online yeah. at the point of time, right? You couldn't do much. Right. So I started CC then because I realized that I had access, privileged access to good seniors, mm-hmm. good friends, a community who guided me through my struggles as a Muslim. Mm-hmm. Other converts didn't have the same uh, privilege to do so. But at the same time, it should be a commerce right to get the support from the community. Mm-hmm. Right? So CC started uh, with that vision to try to give that same community support to every convert that comes knocking on the door. So for that first year, because it was still circuit breaker, still phase one, phase two, mm-hmm. we went phase three and then came back to phase two again. Uh, we couldn't really do much physically, yeah. right? So a lot of our things came online, like Instagram lives, podcasts, and everything. And uh, we thought that that would be the same way forever for Common Central, mm-hmm. uh, but we didn't realize um, that the, the need of it was growing. So mm-hmm. come fast forward to 2021, 2022, right? We realized that actually a lot of people need a community, and you cannot build a community by posting a podcast every Monday and Friday, mm-hmm. right? So that was us when we got more interest from the community. Our team expanded, uh, our our participants also grew, and we started to organize events. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so step by step, and that's uh, how Commerce Central came to be today, 2023. We have our Ramadan programs, yeah, you know, we meet almost every weekday, and things like this. So, so this is the first year for Ramadan program, or yeah. physically? Or yeah, so this is our first physical wow, Ramadan program. Wow. Uh, basically, the Ramadan idea is that um, because for converts, it's quite a lonely journey, right? Mm-hmm. So we wanted to journey with a convert throughout the entire of Ramadan. So that's why on weekdays, we do Iftar to Rawi, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Fridays. Mm-hmm. Then weekends, we bring them to the mosque. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, that was the idea behind it. Because uh, especially in Ramadan, outside of the other 11 months of the year, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. If you think about it in Ramadan, and especially on Hari Raya, mm-hmm. your friends want to be there for you, but they cannot. Because yeah. I have to go back from to Rawi. Mm-hmm. Right? And if I, as a convert, I go to to Rawi and Masjid, I will be so lost. Right? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to expect, right? Sometimes you do the sujud tilawat, then I go into I go into uh, ruku. Everyone go into sujud, <laughs> right? So like these kind of issues, we want to minimize for comments so that they can feel like this is a place for them to be in, also you know, and and reduce the barriers so that people can adopt the Islamic lifestyle. And that was the reason behind our. Oh, sure. so. uh, just know that we heard the your talk, your short talk, but. I couldn't believe that young you were just a convert five years ago and you could deliver that, mashallah. Allah, I believe yeah, it seems like you knew a lot more than maybe most of the Muslims out there, mashallah. <laughs> so um, maybe you can share with us mm. one beautiful experience that you have uh, you have experienced, basically. Mm. Yeah, mm. 
One of the most beautiful things that I've experienced, maybe two. Uh. The first is Umrah. I went for Umrah in 2019. Oh, you went to Umrah uh, before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, before that, before you went into that, yeah. are you married? Oh uh, yes, I got married last year in December. Oh, mashallah, congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you. Oh, with a uh, convert or? Uh, no, uh, Indian Muslim. Oh, Indian yeah. Muslim. Okay, mashallah. Yeah. So, so, she was my JC uh, friend. Uh, uh, then I was a Muslim. So, uh, after I became a Muslim, we reconnected. And oh. uh, after that, we got married last year. Yeah. Yeah. So you went Umrah with her or by yourself? No, by myself. Yeah. So 2019, a year after I had converted, uh, I, I, I just wanted it from MS. Okay. So I, be, I, I, has, I was a pilot trainee when I was in the Air Force. Uh, mm. I didn't manage to complete the training, but because I was overseas training, I wanted it a bit later than my PM. So everyone had went for their grad Umrah trip. Mm. So then I was planning my Umrah trip and no one could go with me because everyone was really busy in the and everything. I was thinking where should I go? Right? Taiwan, Hong Kong, Japan, or anywhere. I was thinking, okay, like, why not go for Umrah? Mm. Right, why not go for Umrah? So I, I had planned for Umrah and everything. And I recall before I went, my family did kind of like an intervention thing. All of them sat around the table and like, you cannot go. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, suddenly I came back from Australia after my pilot training. I was wearing Juba, I was wearing uh, Kurta, Sonko, and everything. Uh. And I was going to the mosque very often, like, <laughs> yeah. very pertinent signs yeah. of uh, radicalization to <laughs> non-Muslims. <laughs> okay? So the, the, they all sat me around the table. Is there, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for me, I'm just like, okay, I want to be a better Muslim, right? <laughs> I so, uh, but then I, like, I took out my phone, I'm like, okay, hi guys, you have Starbucks. You know, they have McDonald's. <laughs> I'll buy it, like, fried chicken is great. Yeah. Right, so they, 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 let, they let me go. Uh, so I went, I went there, it was really the most beautiful thing I've ever uh, experienced. Uh, I went there not expecting anything, I went alone. Uh, it was a Malay tour. So I didn't understand Malay also, but yeah. for some reason I, I was about to ask you that question because most yeah. of the Umrah agency Malay. are in either Malay or in Indian language. Correct, correct. Yeah. But correct. recently, I think 2022, they have like a lot English. more English. Yeah. Ones, right? yeah. So how do you? Uh, Back in 2019, uh, I was also worried lah, like how am I gonna learn Umrah yeah. and everything. But Allah really sent miracles. Like I put my intention in. Suddenly, the Pogawai kind of took interest because I'm a co- convert. So he said, "Why not you bunk in with me? Right? So it's cheaper for you." And every day I'll translate for you what is going to happen on the day after. Uh, right, uh, so, I, so I bunked in with him uh, when we were on Umrah. We got very close. So I would, I would be like by his side all the time, the entire Umrah. He would tell me, like, he would say this in Malay, then he would tell me this, okay, we're going to do this in English. Blah, blah, blah. So that was really easy for me. And at the same time, because 2019 was when I first came back from uh, Australia, uh, Australia, didn't really have a community of sorts at all. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really kind of uh, distanced myself a bit from Islam there, trying to get back. Right? So that Hari Raya, I didn't really expect to have anything to do, like, to convert. Like. But in that Umrah, I met the entire Jama'ah. So all of them kind of adopted me as like, their adopted son and everything. So I, that Hari Raya was just spent uh, going around the Umrah Jama'ah's house oh. and everything. So, so they invited you to... Yeah, so that really showed me like, like oh, what a beautiful like, community this is. Like, I'm just, I, I, I can't offer much to them and I don't have anything I can give them. <laughs> but yet, they take me to their houses, they offer me food and they love me like how they love a son. They give me jubas and everything. Uh, so that was one of the most beautiful things. The second was when um, I, I ran into some issues uh, concerning faith when I first came back to Australia, from Australia. Uh, I didn't understand, um, I, I didn't understand some of the aspects of Islam that a lot of converts struggle with, like other and Qadr, uh, and some of the theological aspects, monotheism and everything. So now I was like, a lot of questions, right? And there was this one brother that I met through Nara Akam. He is a convert himself. And every day, uh, he's working. Uh, he would ask me to go for supper together. I'll, I'm free, I'm just waiting for school to start. And every two or three days will happen, right? Mm. And somehow, he will come back to the same questions every two or three days. He will answer me in the best way that he can. I will not understand, I'll take a little bit of it. And, and, but he still answer me, he'll be very patient with me. So over the course of three or four months, it, it happened again and again and again and again and again. And, again. and throughout, he was so patient with me. And after three to four months, I finally got it. Like, I, I didn't have any doubts in my heart anymore. But that really showed me like, the spirit of brotherhood, like, the, the length that you are able to go to help a brother. Right? Mm. And one of the reasons why I did CC was because I realized that I had access to these people. Whereas some people, uh, you know, a lot of uh, converts are Filipinos. Do you know that uh, the Filipinos are the biggest population of converts in Singapore? Wow, sure. Yeah, no, biggest. The biggest. Time, Chinese yeah. second, Filipino first. Yeah. So yeah. most of them are domestic helpers. They only have one day off of the week, right? No way they're gonna spend their one day Dara Akam, right? Yeah. So and they, when they don't, then they have no access to anything that Dara Akam uh, offers, right? Mm. So we, they, but they deserve help, they deserve a community. Mm. So that's what we wanted to do for them in Common Central. That gave me the experience that, okay, not everyone is like me, you know, mm. and, but you all need that help and, and community. 
So um, in Commerce Central, we release a podcast series once a week. Uh, in this, in Ramadan alone, and it goes on for an entire year. Every Friday, we release a podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, the first one uh, week of Ramadan, we release a podcast series about how to uh, optimize your Ramadan so that you can have a best Ramadan ever. Second third, we talk about Laitu Qadar. And fourth week, we talked about moving beyond Ramadan. So our podcast topics center around commerce sharings and topics that are pertinent to uh, new Muslims or returning Muslims. Uh. So that is what uh, we do. We record right here in this studio. Uh, in fact, the equipment is just right uh, behind mm-hmm. the drawer there. Uh, and, and we invite guests like um, the previous guest we had was Ustaz Faritz uh, from Masjid Al Fala. He, he ah, came. Okay. Yeah, he, and so, Alhamdulillah, we, we are quite. Uh, we receive a lot of support from the community, and that's amazing. Other than that, uh, on Tuesday and Fridays, we have classes uh, for new, new Muslims and uh, for returning Muslims. And we, we teach them about the basics to uh, Islam, basics of prayer. That is conducted by our Ustaz, Ustaz Samir, uh, mm. from, uh, and he has an ARS certificate. Like, he has a lot of experience uh, from his prior uh, stint at Darul Akam. So we partner with him to ensure that the converts have a place to go to full English mm. so that they can learn Islam. Uh, so the class is conducted over here? Uh, it's conducted near Juchat Complex. Uh, it's a Mu'is East Wakaf building beside Haja uh, Mamuna. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, and then once a month, we have something called a community day. So as mentioned, we want to build a community, right? So we come from a few perspectives. One is the online uh, presence, on uh, classes, weekly classes. But once a month, we want to do activities like hiking, mm. like uh, playing board games, like having discussions, to really get the community to come here and just enjoy being around each other, have conversations, right? Mm. So that you know the brother, and we realize that if you if you want to do everything alone, like we want to help everybody, right? Mm. You cannot do it alone, right? You must get people and rope them in to help together, right? Mm. So. Through these community days, more Muslims are able to understand who a convert is, mm-hmm. what they know, what they don't know, what the challenges is, right? Mm-hmm. So they themselves, when push comes to the shelf, they can help these converts now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So usually, how big is the community that mm-hmm. we have created in this city? Um, normally, our events have about 40 to 50 participants uh, per month. Mm-hmm. Our classes have about 30 to 40 uh, uh, every session uh, on Tuesday and Fridays. So it's slowly growing. Um, and as, as Convert Central goes in scale also, we want to open up more uh, initiatives for our converts and bombers to come. And that comes with partnering with masjids, with madrasa, mm-hmm. with, with organisations to see where we can then expand and work together la, for our programmes. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so regarding Ramadan, what's, uh, what are the programmes that you are doing actually? Yeah, so Ramadan, um, as mentioned, we wanted a journey with um, mm. not just converts but anyone who comes. So uh, we, we kind of took it from ground up. What would be the biggest challenges for those uh, who might not be that acquainted with Islam, yeah. right? Yeah. And first and foremost is Tarawih. Uh, definitely, what that's one of the bigger things. Other than fasting, is Tarawih, right? So we decided to make it a fully English guided Tarawih session every mm-hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays. So yeah. what we do is that uh, you, you know that in between two sets of rakats in the masjid, you recite some Arabic uh, mm-hmm. du'as or recitations, right? Most of the time, like even if you're a Muslim, you don't know. You spend five years without knowing what they say, right? You just wait for them to finish reciting, then you go to the next rakat. But uh, for us, what we did was that we made an English version, a guidebook, and pa- uh, passed it around for free, and we guided the entire session in English. So we recite, uh, "Fadlan min Allah wa Niyama," and then we say, "Grace and bounty are from Allah." So the people know what they're reciting, right? And we explain everything that happens in Tarawih, every single session. So the converts can come and find that it's a place for them. Like other converts are here and everything. And, and kind of like a theory side of things. Mm-hmm. And then practical, we bring them to a masjid once a week. So on Saturday, Sundays, we do masjid hopping. Mm-hmm. So first week was uh, Masjid al Ansar, mm-hmm. second week was uh, al Fala, uh, third week was uh, Mujahideen, and then last, uh, the coming one tomorrow is uh, Masjid al Mawada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we kind of train these people Monday to Friday, and Saturday we bring them for practical. So this is what happens at the mosque. Mm-hmm. So that after this, next Ramadan, they can go to the mosque. Mm. They know what is going on. You know. So basically, usually the weekdays, they are prepared for this particular Sunday. Correct, correct, correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. So really want to, like, the intention is that, you know, the successful Ramadan is not a Ramadan where you do all these things one off. Mm. It's not about reading the Quran entirely in one Ramadan and then the next 11 months, you don't touch the Quran. Mm. It's about your small and consistent steps. You do it for life. Right, so uh, other than our Turawi and Masjid Hopping events, we do our Quran club where it's not about khataming the Quran but let's build a habit. Mm. Every, every day 30 minutes. You can read the transliteration, you can read the translation, mm. you can read the Arabic uh, huruf, up to you. Mm. But read for 30 minutes and build the relationship beyond Ramadan also. 
So uh, that, that's kind of what we do. Uh, we try to achieve uh, in the month of Ramadan itself. And then it ends on Hari Raya with a Commerce Central Eid event. So as mentioned, I think Hari Raya is the day where it's the most difficult for more Muslims to be around converts. Because mm. any other day you can still say, okay, I go to mosque to do Taraweeh. Mm. But Raya, you can only do your family. Yeah. And converts yeah. don't have that family to Raya with them. Yeah. So we open up this day called Commerce Central's Eid. Bring all the converts together, we, we Raya together. So oh, we do uh, like, uh, we do converse sharings, we have uh, ustaz to come and give a taskira, and we give food, and then some of them will open houses and we visit each other. So we really want to be here to really ensure that you know, everyone is taken care of. Yeah. You mentioned about you give out food, etc. Mm. during the Raya. So mm. for example, for Malay, we have our own dishes, Indian mm. have their own dishes, even Arab Muslims have their own dishes. Mm. So for you guys mm. as converts, what dishes mm. do you prepare for the convert? So the beautiful thing about being a convert uh, in Singapore uh, is that uh, you have to balance between two cultures. Now you have a uh, young Muslim, uh, the Islamic culture. And uh, you know, coincidentally, Muslims in Singapore majority are uh, Malay and Indian. Right? So biryani, uh, you know, uh, your, your misoto, you have to get used to these kind of things. But at the same time, you can't say that now that I'm a Muslim, I'm no longer Chinese. Right? So you know, on our eat days, uh, we, we cater whatever, uh, you know, whatever the born Muslims cater. Uh, we cater for Minang. Right, oh. uh, be it nasi lemak, be it uh, rendang, uh, be it uh, ayam masak merah, oh. all, all of these we buy. But people will pull up. People will bring oh. their uh, oh. own cuisines to come. Suddenly you see uh, there's tea chong fun and it's halal. <laughs> and it's like there are Japanese sisters and they bring, uh, I, I, I think they bring their soba or something like that. Oh. And, and things, this, this is really quite beautiful when like I come yeah. to commerce and then you have a lot of these things that you have never expected to eat now that you're a Muslim. And then because these people are born in their culture, they know how to make their own food in a way that is halal, right? And they bring it, you can eat it. Oh. Uh, so, uh, it's a balance, it's a balance. Uh, if we were to cater Chinese food, then uh, you know, it won't suit the taste of everybody. Uh, so we, we cater what is accepted in everyone's eyes, uh, our general Muslim food. Everyone brings and we chop uh, kind of chips in a little bit uh, to the culture. So another thing that we do in Ramadan is Qiyam. So as you know, Kiam is the practice for most of the masjids in Singapore. They open up last 10 nights, right? Yeah. But we also realize that there is a barrier for anyone who starts, not just for converts, for both Muslims who want to start Kiam. They don't know what is Kiam, they don't know what kind of prayers, you Tawa prayers, Tahajud prayers, what are these things, right? And most of the time, you don't have a Ustaz explaining to you, like it's taken for granted that people should know, right? But we realize that you can't take this for granted when you are a convert, right? These things have to be taught to converts, right? And then similarly for both Muslims as well. So we decided to do create Kiam also fully English guided and, uh, and we also have an English guide on what a Kiam is uh, what are the types of prayers, what are the other types of worship you can do the chapters of the Quran you can recite things like this and we've done it uh, twice so far so the first one was uh, in the third week of Ramadan now it's the fourth week, uh, 25th night of Ramadan we're doing it later uh, and, and later on you get to see that every two rakats everything that we recite will be translated to English so that mm. it is not just about like you do 100 rakats but you must really have the intention and you must really come with uh, purpose to your yeah, uh, correct correct yeah okay. i think the first thing that i'd like to say is that uh, a big big thank you to the team uh, you know our team of 50 plus team members have been working so hard for the past you know, one two and a half years to make convert central the way the place that it is today and this team is made out of converts themselves but muslims and second generation muslims and every single one of them came not because we could pay them, but not because they could put it on their LinkedIn. And we are not even an organization <laughs> properly, right? So we can't put it on LinkedIn. But it came to serve, right? So big thank you to them. And some of them they are not even converts. So they don't directly benefit off our initiatives also. I am a convert. I benefit off my own initiative. So like, from the bottom of my heart, like to the Convert Central team, thank you so much. I, know, I, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards each and every one of the immense that like, multiplies their good deeds and accepts it you know, so that it will come on mm. a day of judgment and, and, and make their skill heavier and be the reason why they enter gender. Sure. But it has really benefited so many people. We've seen at least 30 to 40 converts embrace Islam because of what we do. Sure. And I'm sure what we don't see is much more. Sure. Right? And, and, and perhaps the last thing I'll say is that we've come pretty far in the past three years, uh, three short years even though in my, from where I am it's been quite long and we've been doing like this for quite a long time. But we want to do more right? and, and we hope that eventually we are able to get support from the community, mm. able to put ourselves out there and let converts know that we are here for you, let Bomb Muslims know that we are here for you and, 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 and yeah, like that's what drives us forward even more, that knowing that there are more people who need it right? and that our mission isn't done, I don't think it will ever be done 
but inshallah we do our best we put our food in front and we say that we deal with our intentions we try to keep it sincere Allah accept it and uh, he will facilitate for us inshallah inshallah